Hello there and welcome to ChemCracker. Today we are looking at organic chemistry. In particular, we're focusing on alkanes, alkenes, and halogen or alkanes. So we're going to be doing 12 MCQ questions that could come on your CAPE exam. Let's get ready. Now, let's look at question one. It says, which of the following statements about alkanes is not true? A says, alkanes burn in air to produce heat. Now that is true. Most organic compounds, including alkenes, burn exothermically to produce heat, of course, and they also produce carbon dioxide and water as long as there is sufficient air. Now, alkenes decolorize bromine in the presence of UV light. This is true. They undergo those halogenation reactions. And alkanes are saturated compounds. This is also true. But B says alkanes undergo electrophilic substitution. That is not true. Alkanes actually undergo radical substitution, free radical substitution, in the presence of UV light with halogens. So B is your answer. Let's look at question two. The compound C12H26 can be cracked. Which compound is least likely to be formed from the cracking of C12H26? Now, when you crack a hydrocarbon, you usually get smaller hydrocarbons, and you can also get hydrogen as well. So you, you tend to get an alkene and an alkane, but you can also get hydrogen and not get an alkane. Okay? Now, if you're going to split C12H26, let's look at what kind of compounds you can get. All right, now, you can get C6H12, that's an alkene, that's possible, C2H6, C8H16. The one that's least likely to happen is this one, C11H24. In order to form that, I would have to split off CH2 from C12H26. Now, CH2 is not a stable compound, all right? This is this cannot exist on its own for any period of time. So it's very unlikely that you could get this. You could get something with C2, or you could get hydrogen, but you wouldn't get CH2, right? So therefore, you're not going to form C11H24. So your answer is D. Question 3 says, which of the following is likely to be formed when ethane reacts with bromine in the presence of sunlight? Now, what you want to do for this is to write the mechanism and see which one of these is likely to be formed. Right, so when we look at the mechanism, initiation, propagation, and termination, in initiation step, the bromine molecule is broken down to produce two bromine radicals. In propagation, you produce the alkyl ion and HBr in the first step, and then the bromoalkane and reproduce the bromide ion, the bromine radical. And then in the termination stage, the radicals combine to give you different products. Now, if we look at the options we have here, we have C387Br. That's not going to be possible. This is the bromoalkane that you would produce, C2H5Br. So that's out. CH3Br is very unlikely because you would have to break up the ethane molecule. So that's that's not it. And then C says C5H12. Now, you're going to go as far as C4H10 here. And that corresponds to D. So your answer is D. You can get C4H10. Question 4 um, asks, how many carbon atoms are present in limonene? And limonene is drawn, the skeletal structure is given here. So in the skeletal structure, you can put in the number of carbon atoms. So there's one there, there's one there, there, there. This is a six-membered ring. Plus one, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are 10 carbon atoms in limonene. Your answer is 10A. Question 5. Now, question 5 also concerns limonene. It says, which of the following is not true? Not true. 
about limonene. So let's look at it. A says limonene undergoes electrophilic addition with hydrogen chloride. Well, is that true? Yes, well, it has an alkene group right there. And alkenes do undergo electrophilic addition with hydrogen chloride. Now, B says limonene burns in air with a yellow smoky flame. And we know that alkenes will do that. It has two alkene groups. Yeah, and D says limonene reacts with KMnO4 to produce CO2 gas. Well, does it have a CH2 at about the double bond? And the answer is yes. That bond, when it splits with hot KMnO4, will produce CO2 because there's a CH2 right here at the end. C is the answer. It says limonene can be classified as an aromatic compound. And that's not true. It does not have a benzene ring. It has a six-membered ring, but it's not benzene. It's a cyclohexene ring. Question six says, compound X undergoes the following reactions. And X to Y to Z and X to methylpropane. It says, the conversion of Y to Z involves what? And we have A, nucleophilic substitution, radical substitution, electrophilic substitution, an oxidative addition. Now, if we look at Y, it has C4H8Br, and Z has C4H10O2. Now, the reagent here is sodium hydroxide, and we can see no sodium is transferred. It's the hydroxide ion that's transferred. So the two bromines are replaced by two OH groups, because this could be written as C4, right, H8, OH2. If you look at it carefully, right, so what has happened is that the bromine atoms have been replaced by OH minus ions. The OH minus ions, right, are nucleophiles and they have substituted the bromide, the bromine atoms. So therefore, this is nucleophilic substitution. Your answer is A. Question 7 says, dealing with the same synthetic reaction, X goes to Y to Z and X goes to methylpropane, the structural, the structural formula of Y could be, and it gives you four options here. Now, what you'd want to do is to have a look at both um, synthetic pathways. So, I would go X to Y, X is C4H8, and Y is C4H8Br2, and Z is C4H10O2. Now, that doesn't give you much information about the actual structure of C4H8. Now, C4H8, if you remember, could have several isomers. It, you have butuanine, butuene, and you also have methylpropene. All right. Now, if we look at X reacting with hydrogen here, in the presence of nickel, it produces methylpropane. It's the same X. You've added hydrogen to a molecule and you get methylpropane. Now, if you consider what happens, you add the hydrogen adds across the double bond. Okay, so if the structure looks like that, then the double bond must have been here. So your original molecule must have been methylpropene, okay? So, if it's methylpropene is your original molecule, X, then Y has to have the bromine also added where you would get the where you would add the hydrogens, all right? So, in, for Y, what you would have is the bromine atoms here and here, and so you have to look for the structure that has that, and the structure that has that is C. C is your answer. Number eight, it says compound X undergoes the following reactions. Similar synthetic pathway, like the question seven and six above. X goes to Y goes to Z, and the question says compound Z can be classified as, 
And if we look at what's happening here, compound Y, what's the difference between compound Y and compound Z? Uh, compound Y has C4H8 bromine atoms, two bromine atoms that disappear. So, and we get, well, we get C4H10O2. So we've added two oxygen atoms and we've added two hydrogen atoms there. And what, what was the reagent? The reagents was OH. So perhaps we've added two OH groups there, haven't we? And so what we have is a dialcohol, C4H8OH2. And so our answer is A. Question 9 says, which equation represents a valid propagation step in the free radical reaction between ethane and chlorine? That's a very good question. It catches students out because what they'll tend to do is to write this. Um, but it's very important to remember that you don't form the chloroalkane in the first step of the propagation steps. All right. Actually, what you form is the alkyl radical. So your answer is not A. So let's move on from there. Now, if we look at C, C has the ethane reacting with a hydrogen radical. The hydrogen radical doesn't take part in your um, radical substitution reaction here. So that one is also out along with A. So we can rule that one out. Now, if we look at B, this doesn't happen. You don't form the chloroalkane and then it reacts with more chlorine in the propagation step. Okay, so this one is out. This is your answer. That is formed in the termination step where you have the alkyl radical, in this case the ethyl radical, reacting with a chlorine radical to form a chloroalkane. D is your answer. Question 10 says, which intermediate ion forms the greatest amount during the addition of HBr to propene? This could be a question on alkenes as well. Now, if you try to remember Markov Mikov's rule, because propene is an asymmetrical alkene, and so it will form two products when it reacts with um, HBr. Now, the more stable intermediate will be favored, and so the product that involves a more stable intermediate will be formed in the greatest amount. The Markovnikov rule says that the hydrogen is going to tend to add to the carbon in the double bond that already has more hydrogen. So let's look at that. So the hydrogen is going to tend to add to the carbon with more hydrogen already attached. So it's going to tend to add to this one. In which case, you're going to have CH3 here and the plus charge will be on the second carbon, which is corresponding to your answer A. Question 11 asks, what is the IUPAC name for the molecule above? And you're given a skeletal formula. Now, what you want to do when you're naming the organic compounds is to look for the longest chain first. So I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five. That's a chain of five carbon atoms. And this is some sort of pentane. And all of your answers have pentane involved. And then I'm going to look for the side chain or substituent groups. I see two branches right here and an iodine attached there. So this is some sort of iodo or um, pentane or methyl pentane, possibly. There are two methyl groups attached here. Now, what you want to do is to number your chain so that you have the smallest numbers. So if I number from this side, it could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, if I go from that side, so if these are, these are methyl groups, it would be 2, 4, 5, 2 methyl, 4 methyl, 5 iodo, that would be 2 four and five that would be a total of 11 if i add up all the numbers now if i number from the right hand side to be one two three four and five there and then if i look at the substituent groups would be on one two and four 
that's a total of 7 so that would be smaller number so I'm going to number from the right hand side now if we look at that then we could have 1 iota on 1 and methyl groups on 2 and 4 so that would be 1 iota 2 4 methyl but it's 2 methyl groups so you'd say dimethyl right if you look at a, it has 1 iota and it has a 2 4 methyl but it's you need to say dimethyl because there's two of them so your answer is d 1 iota 2 4 dimethyl and the iota comes before the methyl in, as place in alphabetical order so C also has 2 4 dimethyl and 1 iota but the methyl should be after the iota due to alphabetical order so your answer is D question 12 says which of the following molecules will react with aqueous sodium hydroxide via SN1 only now for SN1 what you need is that you need a tertiary halogen or alkane okay so you're looking for a tertiary halogen or alkane and so your answer is C thank you for joining me on Chemcracker do like the video subscribe and turn on notification for more chemistry crackers see you next time